our, um, with our webinar. So good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. I think we'll have a few more people trickle in as we get started. But my name is Ted Blank, and I know many of you, but for those of you who I don't know, I am one of the travel advisors here at Travel Leaders. And I am very excited to talk today about a cruise that I will be personally hosting to Alaska next July. And so our guest today is Joe, and Joe represents Cunard Line, which is the cruise line that operates the ship that we'll be traveling. So Joe's going to tell us a little bit about Cunard Line, and then the two of us are going to talk a little bit about Alaska and give you kind of a preview of this cruise um, in the hopes that you'll consider joining me. So Joe, welcome. Well, thank you, Ted. And, and, and so I, like you said, I'll start out with kind of a short Cunard story, kind of to introduce Cunard. And, uh, and then, as you said, our agenda will proceed to talking about Alaska and the itinerary kind of specifically and uh, information about Queen Elizabeth, our ship that we're focusing on today. Then we'll break for lunch about noon and then we'll, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We expect the entire presentation folks to last about uh, 20 minutes to, to 30 minutes in that in that time frame. So I like to kind of start out all my presentations with that same joke. And so uh, Ted, I want you to hold up that coffee mug. Ted is uh, drinking coffee out of the right mug today, a Cunard Line uh, coffee mug. Um, Ted and I work closely together. I work very closely with the entire uh, travel leaders uh, company that Ted works for, and we've enjoyed a long-standing relationship. I also represent Q, uh, Princess Cruises as well, um, and uh, and unfortunately, I have a Princess Cup today. But nonetheless, uh, Cunard really uh, is unique in a number of ways. Uh, our mantra is that we are Cunard. And, and in large part, what that means is that we're very passionate and we really are passionate. And working with Ted, you'll find out how passionate Ted is with Cunard. He, when I visit with Ted, he makes me more passionate about Cunard. But in large part, that means it's our job to maintain and protect the legacy of Cunard. And so we're gonna share a few thoughts with you. In large part, um, we're asking you to return to the golden age of travel. And the original golden age of travel really started at the end of the 19th century up to World War uh, I, a little bit after that. Um, there was an incredible demand for uh, immigration and that in large part is how Cunard gained its name, even though we started in 1840. Uh, and until the until aircraft in World War II, we carried millions of people to the New World. Uh, we've served as troop trips over the years. Uh, during a time when uh, dress was polite, um, Ted has a little story about this picture on the right hand side of your screen as the port as the ship is in port. Yeah, so so one of the things that for, for folks who have cruised before, um, you know, cruise ships kind of tend to come and go into port. And this particular picture um, shows how different it is when a Cunard ship comes into port. And in this this particular case, this is Queen Elizabeth, the ship we'll be traveling on. And we visited this little tiny German port um, on the Baltic Sea. And the entire town turned out to watch Queen Elizabeth come in and go. And they had marching bands and people cheering and um, a whole flotilla of boats followed us out. So it's really a different experience than you would get on kind of a, you know, more average normal cruise ship. And you think you were in that crowd, right, Ted? I was on the ship. You were on the ship. Yep, very, yep. very nice. So uh, I, cruising on a Cunard voyage really is considered the pinnacle of cruising. Almost everybody surveyed says they aspire to be a, what we referred to you are our guests as um, uh, everybody in, in, inspires to be a Cunarder. So I'm a Cunarder, Ted's a Cunarder, and we hope you will be too. We're a three ship fleet right now. We have another ship uh, on order being built. Our three ships are Queen Victoria, Queen Mary II, and of course, Queen Elizabeth. Queen Victoria 
in Queen Elizabeth are identical sister ships with slight, very slight variations. Um, they're full of grandeur, elegance, very British with a sense of community on board the ships. And I think that's a real key part of what Cunard offers. Very international, real international flavor. When I crossed some years ago on Queen Mary II, there were 30 different nationalities. Uh, there were about 800 Americans, uh, but it was really quite enjoyable to engage with, with others. And they're all tend to be like-minded people. And I think that's one of the common denominators with our customers. A couple of um, background facts I'm gonna share with you, and then we'll kind of get into the meat of our presentation. But our, our mission statement and our vision really is to be the British luxury liners of choice in the 21st century, to deliver life enriching experiences, while being mindful of tradition. And those traditions are, are afternoon tea, which is the highlight of any Cunard voyage, uh, an authentic English pub, the Golden Lions Pub, which happens to be my favorite place to dine on the ship, to go in and have fish and chips um, uh, in, in the afternoon. Um, so, with the exception of the main dining room, it's really my favorite place to dine on the ship. Formal balls with gentlemen hosts throughout uh, all sailings. Uh, if anybody would like to dance with one of the, the uh, gentlemen hosts. Um, no, no, it's the 21st century. There are lady hosts too. Lady and gentlemen dance hosts. So it's really, it's really unique. Again, it's another unique feature of, of Cunard. Um, <clears throat> We, were, we started in 1840. That's my boss there in the lower left-hand corner, Samuel Cunard. Uh, many think he was British. He's actually Canadian, uh, hailed from Halifax. And there's a, if, you, if you ever have a chance to visit Halifax, there's a wonderful Cunard Museum there. <clears throat> many industry firsts that you will uh, hear about as you're cruising. The first ship to have a gymnasium and health center. First ship to have an indoor pool, 1913. Uh, and um, electric lights and steel, the first ships to ever have those features. And, and we're just evocative of grand times. We're really the only uh, cruise line out there with true ocean liners. Look at the Britannia restaurant. This is my favorite dining room at sea on, uh, on board the Cunard ships, the Britannia restaurant which is where the majority of people dine in the main dining room on, in, on the ships. It's called Britannia. It's named after our, uh, one of our early ships, Britannia. Um, the most gorgeous dining rooms at sea, really. With food to match. I'm sorry? With food to match. With food to match. Cunard White Star Service. So if anybody remembers a famous ship called Titanic, that was part of White Star Cruise Line. And at some point later, we merged. We kept the name White Star Service to describe the service. And there's a saying that goes, it's not the service itself, which is luxury, professional, beautiful, but it's how it makes you feel. And you'll know it when you feel it. And I think that's the best way to describe it. Absolutely. Uh, evocative of grand times. Uh, there's another saying that goes along, uh, elegant enough to be special, yet uh, casual enough to be comfortable. So you can see these two ladies are enjoying an afternoon tea and scones in a private area of, of one of the ships. Uh, this is really in the garden lounge. All right, we're a worldwide cruise line. Today we're focusing right there on Alaska. Beautiful. All right. Now, before we get started, I just want to address, if I can, uh, kind of health and safety in a general way. We've certainly had our challenges in the last year and a half, like the entire world has. Right now, our vaccination policy requirements apply to all voyages departing up to and including April 17, 2022 on, on Queen Mary II, subsequent and May 17, 2022 on Queen Elizabeth. Subsequent to that, we have not made further announcements, okay? So they will be forthcoming 
if there are requirements and if there are what they will be. All right, let's go to Alaska, Ted. Uh, well, I, have to, I have to say I was I was so excited. Um, I guess it was probably three years ago when Cunard announced that uh, Queen Elizabeth was going to be going back to Alaska. Um, and then we had a unfortunate series of events last year. And so there was uh, no Alaskan season last year. Um, but just super excited for the opportunity to visit one of my favorite places. Um, I think Alaska is is such an interesting, unique, incredible place. And it, and it really does evoke interesting feelings in you. I mean, the, the, the scenery and the, the landscape is just so grand and, and so unspoiled that it is, it is truly unique. Um, and, and we're doing it on the, the really the benchmark of luxury cruises on a Cunard ship. So I was super excited when this um, season was announced and I'm very excited that uh, we'll be back in 2022. So if you've been to Alaska before, you know already what I'm going to say. If you haven't, I, I urge you to give it a lot of thought. But when you go to, a, to when you vacation throughout the world, there's hundreds of beautiful destinations. Alaska is unique. Alaska, when you come back, you know, it's essentially a, a domestic destination with uh, maybe one or two ports of all in Canada. But you come back feeling so enriched. And I think that's the best adjective to use. It's just simply that you feel enriched. So you learn about glaciers, you learn about culture, uh, you participate, you, you might go on a deep sea fishing trip. Um, but it's just, it's just that it's not only scenic and it's not only exciting and it's not just fine dining, but uh, it's a cultural experience as well. And there aren't many destinations or vacations in the world that can have all of those things at one time. Here's just a picture of a beautiful Hubbard Glacier. That's Queen Elizabeth uh, spending time at Hubbard Glacier. I want everybody to think of where they are right now. You're probably in your home, maybe at work. And think of something that is six miles away from you. Okay. So... Uh, that's how wide Hubbard Glacier is. So when you're visiting Hubbard Glacier and you're looking at it, it's a tidewater glacier, which essentially means the, when the, when the uh, glacier calves, the ice falls in the water, uh, it's six miles wide when you're looking at it. Really quite phenomenal just to think of anything that's six miles wide. Hubbard Glacier starts uh, 76 miles inland. If the ice, that formed at the beginning of the glaciers is the same glace, uh, ice that has moved to the, uh, and, and calved into the water. It's 400 years old. All right. So you, you can't appreciate even in that picture, really how close you get in the ship and how you can really, you know, see and actually smell and hear the glacier. Um, you, you really do get an up close experience, um, which it's hard to tell a little bit on the picture. Very nice, very nice. Ed, you wanna introduce July 1st? Yeah, so um, we are gonna be focusing on a specific itinerary that um, is one sailing in the summer Alaskan season. And it's a July 1st, um, 2022 round trip cruise from Vancouver, British Columbia on Queen Elizabeth. And this is the cruise that I will be personally hosting. So you have the opportunity to uh, travel with me and uh, with our friend Kenton Cool, who Joe will introduce in a second, but um, we'll talk a little bit more about what that means at the end of the presentation. But this is um, a specific date, July 1st through the 11th of 2022. Uh, it's really an exciting date. And then just as a side note, uh, please know that if this date doesn't work for you, while uh, Ted's not gonna host every sailing throughout the summer as much as he'd like to, but uh, there are, are certainly other sailings that you're welcome to, uh, to, to uh, visit with Ted about. Uh, just unparalleled beauty. This is uh, uh, Hubbard Glacier again. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is, is a great ship, great size ship, about 2,000 passengers to visit uh, Alaska. Spacious grills, suites, White Star service, of course. 
um, what we consider very robust itineraries with full days in port. And I think that's really key. Being a seven day, or excuse me, a 10 day um, itinerary, there isn't really a rush to get from port to port where you sometimes have to have too short of a day. Relaxed days at sea. And uh, the more one cruises, the more one really enjoys, I think, the, the days at sea with so much to do. Maybe uh, experience a spa treatment. And by all means, uh, please know that if you're thinking of a, a, a spa treatment, maybe a massage in our uh, new uh, uh, labeled uh, Marial Spa, that uh, everybody wants their massage during an at sea day. So kind of keep that in, in mind. Um, Alaska inspired experiences and our Cunard experts, or excuse me, our Cunard Insights program, which is uh, a talking, speaking presentation program on board the ship. So it's, it's, it's more than that. I mean, it's, a, it's really kind of an immersive series of experiences. There will be um, lectures and different, different things that you can do on board the ship and on shore um, that, that bring Alaska alive um, and you really will come back with that enrichment that Joe talked about and you know when I talk to, to clients who've cruised on other cruise lines and have cruised on Cunard the comparison for the onboard enrichment is always Cunard it is probably the best program in the industry so you really will have a chance to learn a lot about Alaska if you want and if you don't as Joe said there's a spa and plenty of other things to do as well. So you're going to start your vacation in Vancouver. You're going to board the ship. You might you might uh, arrive Vancouver a day before, maybe a couple of days before. Ted, are you going the day of? I'll probably go the day before. Um, okay. I think Vancouver is a beautiful city and worth spending some time in and not stress out about a late flight missing the ship. Sure. So one thing that's really nice about the departure is that we leave Vancouver, right downtown Vancouver, and we set sail and cruising uh, through the inside passage the entire first day. So it's an at sea day. It's a phenomenal way to start your vacation. And then we jump right into uh, one of the real highlights of your trip. And that's a full day uh, cruising in Glacier Bay National Park. And deep into Glacier Bay National Park is uh, Marjorie Glacier. We have a slide, a personal slide, personal photo uh, following this slide. Uh, and then from there, uh, not only have we experienced this wonderful day in Glacier Bay National Park and all it has to offer, and, and just, again, bringing Alaska to life, we visit Skagway, which is the port city for the gold rush of 1898. You might want to take the uh, famous uh, White Pass Scenic Railway up to the top uh, of the mountain, following one of the paths the men took in 1898. Uh, I've taken I've taken that train ride several times. Uh, then we ride Juneau, just a stunning city right there. Uh, downtown Juneau is right there where we port. Uh, you can enjoy all kinds of fun activity in Juneau, walking around town, maybe deep sea fishing, um, whale watching, whale watching, and Mendenhall Glacier. Ted, Mendenhall Glacier. I know that's a favorite of yours. Ted has an yeah. interesting picture of of uh, Mendenhall Glacier coming up. Then Hubbard Glacier, another opportunity to see glaciers. All surveys tell us that the number one reason most of us want to go to Alaska, the number one driver is to see glaciers. And so we have two glacier viewing days, really, really important. Icy Strait Point, the next port of call. It's rather new in the cruising world uh, for the most part. Uh, it's a small port, very few people live there, infrastructure is being built, but there's some great um, Alaskan experience type shore excursions here. Yeah, and again, it's a great place to go whale watching and it's got some really nice, just if you want to go for sort of a independent hike along the ocean, there's, there's plenty of space to do that and some nice native um, interpretive programs and some kind of fun shopping too. Then Victoria, what a great port of call uh, on the way back. Uh, you can get out the ship, walk to downtown uh, Vancouver, up and down Governor Street and enjoy um, really just a beautiful, charming 
or the beautiful, charming city of uh, Victoria. Yeah, Victoria, <laughs> probably, Victoria probably has one of the most beautiful botanical gardens in the world. It's called Butchart Gardens, and that's a nice excursion too. Good point, good point. Uh, when I was uh, in Victoria one time 20 years ago or so, I was walking through the famous Empress Hotel, which serves afternoon tea, and it's rather famous for that. And uh, just to show that you can't hide, I walked by, walked through the dining room as I was looking at people uh, uh, enjoying tea, and there was my my son's uh, preschool teacher. So <laughs> just know. Anyway, uh, Victoria, and then another day at sea as you conclude your vacation. And again, these at sea days are really nice at the beginning of the cruise and the end of the cruise. It's a great way to share your stories with your newfound friends uh, you know, within the group, or if you're uh, on a different date with other newfound friends, and then back to Vancouver. So it's really quite nice. So this was a picture I took in um, August of this year when I went to um, Alaska and had a chance to cruise into Glacier Bay, and we had just stunningly beautiful weather you know blue sky just a few clouds in the in the sky um sunny day and really you get up close to these glaciers and you just can't imagine how neat it is and i don't know if the ship price spends what about two hours by each glacier and you just kind of find yourself fascinated and just kind of watching watching and then you see little animals you know sea otters swim by or something and it you know amazing how fast those two hours pass literally just watching a hunk of ice. It's it's kind of a neat thing. It's hard to describe. Well, yeah, this is Marjorie Glacier deep into Glacier Bay. And when you're viewing it, there are times you feel just to kind of kind of uh it's hard, it's difficult to get your arms around just how massive everything big. is. Yeah. And you know, your uh perception is a bit distorted, but you'll feel like you could almost reach out and touch the glacier or pick up a rock from the deck and of course, there aren't any rocks on the deck, but if there's one, you feel like you could pick it up and throw it and hit the glacier. And the captain may announce that we're a quarter of a mile away. But uh, Marjorie Glacier right here that we're viewing is a mile wide at the water. It's several hundred feet high. Uh, the glacier goes that far down as well in, into the water. All right, uh, Juno's Waterfront Restaurants in, in, in you know, maybe enjoy some fine dining in Ketchikan. Um, we'll have a wonderful gala dining menu that um, focuses on the taste of Alaska. Uh, you might want to sip local craft beer on board from the Alaskan Brewing, Brewing Company. Uh, Alaska inspired cocktails. I'm not sure what they are, but uh, there'll be some. Um, and enjoying, you know, maybe some uh, hot chocolate out on deck with a blanket on, maybe viewing the glaciers. And I think that's one of the most enjoyable parts of your vacation. Um, and actually, the uh, the days when it's a bit overcast when you're viewing glaciers is actually typically considered a, a better time to see the glaciers. So if it's not a bright, sunny day, don't be disappointed. Actually embrace that because uh, that oftentimes is... Uh, the, are the best glacier viewing days. A couple of personal photos here, Ted, I'll have you share. Yeah, so this is in Juneau. This is Mendenhall Glacier, which is a park just right on the outskirts of Juneau. And the picture on the left there is the visits from the visitor center. So you get an incredible view there. But if you want to, you can walk on a trail that takes you all the way up to that little waterfall there. It's about a mile each way, but just incredibly um, scenic place with a, a glacier that you can almost get up and touch. And then um, that, that big, uh, big black blob on the right there is a black bear um, that was in the parking lot at Mendenhall Glacier. And that was Mama Bear and her two cubs and they were uh, hunting for salmon, fishing for salmon in the creek there. So you really can get some surprising up close encounters with wildlife as well. And once you see, seeing a bear in, in the wild is a, a pretty cool thing. And the people with Ted that day said they'd never seen him run that fast. No, I, I move pretty quickly. <laughs> Dressed to impress at our spectacular ice white ball. There'll be two gala evenings. 
uh, on board the sailing, uh, enjoy uh, world-class shows throughout the week. We'll have a, a naturalist on board the ship providing uh, live bridge commentary. Um, and again, sharing some real culture and uh, experiences uh, that only the locals really can share. Cultural heritage guides on every sailing. And they'll conduct a, a number of presentations throughout the week. You might be able to even uh, track one down and have a little private audience with one. Oh yeah, There's the, all the all the um, insight folks are very very accessible throughout the cruise. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have to buy him a drink, but you know. Hey. So on this particular sailing on July first, uh, Kenton Pool will be on uh, the sailing. Uh, he's one of the world's leading high altitude climbers. Uh, will tell his story and his tales on board the ship. Uh, really, I think one of the more exciting things is when we have these locals uh, and people that have actually experienced the scenery. Uh, that really, again, adds to your vacation and, and uh, provides this enriching experience. There was a time oh, I looked Kenton up last night and he's um, he's about six months younger than me and he's been up to the top of Mount Everest like five times. So I kind of feel like a loser by comparison. <laughs> so well, you're cool. bringing people to him. To fell. Yeah, actually, he took a fall some years back too. Oh. And the doctor told me he'd probably not walk again. Uh, without the use of a cane because of damage to his heels. But he has subsequently, I believe, uh, uh, climbed to the top of Mount Everest again. And on, on, on other sailings, we'll have other adventures, uh, including uh, the son of Sir Edmund Hillary and, and other uh, famous scientists. All right. Just a few slides that we have to share. We'll go through them rather quickly on Queen Elizabeth and really why she's such a wonderful ship for, to, to uh, view uh, Alaska. In particular, there's lots of public deck area and plenty of room to see outdoors, the, the glaciers and again, the scenery. The at sea days that you have will be very scenic uh, throughout the vacation. Uh, and it's the ship that we have on our, what we consider our more exotic itineraries, world cruises, Alaska, Japan, Asia. So we'll kind of go through some of these slides rather quickly. This photo is just depicting uh, the uh, afternoon tea, which is uh, a wonderful experience. I really urge you to participate. Um, probably half the ship or more will, will uh, We'll participate in afternoon tea, and you'll feel like you're really the only ones there. That's the type of service. Grand public deck area or public uh, spaces. Here's one of our lounges called the Garden Lounge. And on, on each of our ships, the Garden Lounge is actually my favorite venue on the ship. Just beautiful, refreshing, and welcoming. The Royal Court Theater. The largest ballroom at sea. I love a photo that's blurred because of uh, the dance. So that's really quite exciting. If you do enjoy dancing, if you enjoy dancing to a live um, big band, definitely um, the, 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 a highlight of every night. If you don't dance, you can learn how to dance. Sure, sure. The Golden Lions Pub, my favorite place to dine. Fish and chips is... Uh, is probably the staple. Afternoon tea, another picture depicting afternoon tea. The Royal Arcade, kind of a shopping area, two stories. Uh, a beautiful games deck. Um, my sons and I have um, taken it upon ourselves to make sure we always play chess outdoors whenever we're cruising. So my wife and I are taking the our three boys on a sailing coming up, and we're looking forward to another big chess match. Here's our new spa. Doesn't that look like a beautiful way to enjoy an afternoon? That's 
Yeah, you can see probably see the glaciers through those windows too if you really wanted to. Certainly could. <laughs> All right, so I'll go through these rather quickly, but just some pictures of Queen Elizabeth's uh, accommodations. Here's a Queen's Grill suite. Oftentimes our largest suites are larger than the house I live in. <laughs> Another picture depicting it. Large outdoor private deck. And uh, and there's really three main types of way to dine in the main dining experience. The majority of cabins dine in the Britannia restaurant that we saw a picture of earlier. If you are in a Queen's Grill suite, you dine in the Queen's Grill restaurant. Seats about 100 people. And then the next size smaller suite uh, will are referred to as the Princess Grill Suites. And if you're in a Princess Grill suite, you'll dine in our Princess Grill restaurant, which likewise uh, seats about 100 people. Then there's a private lounge area for those grill suite customers. More dining shots. There's a private terrace area. Uh, here's a Britannia Club balcony stateroom. It's, uh, if you're in a Britannia club restaurant, you have a, uh, you dine in the Britannia restaurant in kind of a private area of that dining room. And here it is. One of the, the nice things about the um, Cunard and, and being the large ships, you know, large luxury ships is that there's a real wide variety of accommodations available, you know, some sort of from kind of standard type cabins up to, um, you know, really nice balcony cabins, mini suites, full suites, um, sort of something for everyone. If anybody's going to bring kids or grandkids with, there's certainly a kid center. And let's talk about dress on board. And, you know, dress with any cruise, whether it be with my other company or with Cunard, tends to I like to say cause a lot of heartburn, but simply pack as if you would for any Alaska vacation. And during the day, you'll be dressed rather relaxed. So this is a picture depicting the dress for the women. My next slide, I'll kind of go back and forth to is for the men. So uh, dressed relaxed during the day, you'll see people uh, dressed like you expect them to be in Alaska. And then on, um, Eight of the 10 nights, you'll, uh, the dress code will be smart attire. And smart attire is the picture uh, second from the left. Uh, it's described simply for ladies as blouses and skirts or uh, stylish trousers and, and dresses. For men, uh, smart trouser, trousers and uh, a shirt and jacket. Okay. And a tie is optional. And then on the gala nights, uh, it's it for men, it's a dinner jacket, a tuxedo, or a dark suit with a regular tie or a bow tie. And for women, it's a uh, it's a, a cocktail dress, a smart trousers suit, or a formal. Separate. If you if you have a little black dress, this is the place to uh, this is the place to bring it out. The problem I'm having right now, and I'm getting ready to go on, on a cruise in January, is during this time, my tuxedo has shrunk. And <laughs> has a... From lack of use. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, right. I know some people will kind of, um, you know, mention that, that they prefer not to dress up. And Joe will talk about some of the options that are available as well. But you know, my, that was definitely kind of a, a little bit of a barrier the first time I went on Kinar. It's like I don't normally wear a jacket to dinner, you know, in Minnesota. That's not something we do. But really, everybody looks nice. Um, and it does really add to the ambiance on board. And you're in these incredibly beautiful public spaces, enjoying incredible meals, enjoying incredible entertainment. And, you know, it, it's a place where it it, it, it is it does work well to look nice and, and everybody participates and it really does um, 
elevate the ambiance on board, I think. And on the gala nights, you know, people are dressed up and they're enjoying it. It's kind of that night out on, on the town that, again, we don't have that all that often, but it really is a special occasion that we're dressing up for. So always casual will be the casino, the Golden Lions Pub. So I'm covered there. The Corinthian Lounge, the Yacht Club, and the King's Court Buffet. So on any of those evenings, if you prefer not to dress up, uh, certainly you're uh, not going to be hungry and there'll be things to do. Wonderful, relaxed days at sea. Um, I really urge you to watch for any advertised presentation throughout your vacation, especially during those at sea days. If our cultural heritage speaker is presenting, Ted and I were talking about this yesterday that um, he once heard a speaker presenting on, on local traditions in Alaska, I believe, Ted. It was about weaving. And during the presentation, she was actually weaving, right? Yeah. Yep. Live, live. live. We, we talked about how, you know, maybe if, if you saw that advertised here at home on a Tuesday evening, maybe you wouldn't go. But when you're on board the ship, it's really exciting to participate in those things. And again, you learn about the local culture as well. And you, you, you learn so much. Yeah. You feel so relaxed. All right. Ed's going to escort this trip June, July 1st. Clearly, uh, there are many other dates uh, available as well, just without the pleasure of, of Ted's. Uh, presence, um, but uh, it's what we call a, a distinctive voyage as well with travel leaders, right, Ted? Yeah, yeah, so um, I will be traveling on this itinerary, and, um, you know, certainly this isn't a group trip in kind of the classic group sense. Um, you know, there'll be plenty of, plenty of opportunities to, to do things independently, but I always think it's nice to have a group of people who you kind of know and recognize on a ship, and if you see them, you can have lunch together or, or grab a drink or something like that. But I will be hosting this cruise. Um, so you'll be invited to join me for a welcome aboard reception um, on the first day and have a chance to get to know the other folks who are traveling with us. We do have a complimentary um, exclusive shore activity in the hopper for you. Um, haven't quite finalized the plans on that, but at no cost, you'll be able to enjoy this complimentary um, shore activity. And we'll have some other opportunities to, to get together and do some things that I think will surprise and delight you. Um, I, I always like to give a tour of the ship on the first day, just so you can kind of find things. And um, there's an incredible amount of Cunard history on display on Queen Elizabeth. So you probably get to hear me drone on a little bit about that. <laughs> as well, but, you know, just an opportunity to, um, you know, opportunity maybe an excuse to go to Alaska and, um, you know, I'll be there to make sure everything goes smoothly and that you are, you know, connected with the right shore excursions and, and can really enjoy the vacation without any stress. So we leave on July 1st, as Joe mentioned, we spend the 4th of July in Ketchikan. So that'll be kind of a cool place to be. And then return to Vancouver on the 11th of July. And middle of July, you know, beginning middle of July is really probably the prime season for visiting Alaska. So I will follow up with everybody who joined the webinar. I'll send you some more information. We can certainly talk in more depth about the pricing and also the different types of accommodations that are available on board. You know, we talked about the grill suites, the balcony staterooms, standard staterooms. So we can look at all those and find the one that's right for you as well. So I wonder, Ted, do we have any immediate questions? Yes, if anybody has any questions, you're welcome to put them into the Q&A. Um, you know, I know one, one common question we always get about Alaska is kind of what the weather's like in the summer. And, um, you know, some days are definitely shorts weather. Some days you might want to have a pair of slacks. You know, those zip on, zip off slacks can be handy if you go ashore. Um, I don't know, what else would you say about the weather in Alaska, Joe? Well, I, I always suggest that you dress like you would uh, if you were going up north, as we say here, uh, in April or October, which doesn't mean it's going to be cool. It doesn't mean it's going to be anything. It just simply means you don't really know. 
And, uh, but we're, we tend to be really good at packing for those types of trips. And oftentimes uh, it can be 65 degrees and warm and sunny and beautiful. And other times it might be cooler, cooler and maybe misty, but just kind of pack to dress uh, a little bit in layers. You are going during uh, this sailing, really during what's probably the warmest time of the year in Alaska. So you have that going for you. But of course, that's the one thing we can't guarantee. Uh, well, there's other things we can't guarantee too, but that's certainly one of them. But be prepared, have a light, uh, certainly kind of a water repellent jacket with you. If it's a cool, misty day and you're in Glacier Bay National Park, you're going to want to be outside. So by all means, bring a pair of gloves and a stocking cap. If it is cool, uh, you'll enjoy it. Uh, and I've been to Glacier Bay maybe 15 times in my life. And I would say almost every time I've worn gloves when I was there. The most recent time I was there, it was 80 degrees in Juneau. And the next day we were in Glacier Bay, the weather really hadn't changed, but you're surrounded by ice. Uh, and, you know, we wore gloves and a stocking cap. So uh, make sure you have those with. If you don't need them, you don't need to unpack them, but they don't take up any room. So we watched half of Glacier Bay from the hot tub. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if that didn't need a stocking cap there. Um, there was a question about bugs and insects. And, you know, they do have mosquitoes in Alaska. Um, so, you know, when you're ashore, if you go, like when I was there the last time we took a hike through one of the um, kind of the temperate rainforests on one of the islands, and that was a good spot to have bug spray in town on the ship, probably not real necessary, I would say. And I would concur with that. I've been to Alaska many, many times. I've only seen a mosquito one time. Now, that they were as big as a small bird uh, might be, but but uh, I would say it's inconsequential. Yeah, yeah. One thing to be aware of that we didn't actually bring up is that July is kind of when the midnight sun is out. So um, the sun will set in the evening, but you have kind of this cool dusky type time that really runs from about midnight till 6 a.m. So if you're out late, um, you know, if you go to the late uh, late show, you can actually go back out on deck or go back out on your balcony and, you know, have a glass of wine and just enjoy that very different feel to that kind of like perpetual dawn almost. It's kind of an interesting feel to it. It'll yeah. just be 10 days to two weeks for during most of your trip from the summer solstice. So the days will be uh, plenty long. Yep. long. The true 24 hours a day is, is a bit further north. Uh, but you'll have uh, uh, a great amount of uh, uh, daylight. And uh, just as kind of a side tip, I urge all of uh, everybody that I visit with about Alaska, upon leaving Skagway, which is usually at seven or eight or nine in the evening, I urge you to go up on one of the top decks and go to the rear of the ship about 15 minutes or so out of Skagway, and it's the most stunning uh, view you'll ever experience in your life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and when you're there, you'll remember this presentation. <laughs> but uh, I, I go there and almost always I spend about a full hour uh, experiencing it. So really quite scenic, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, no more questions in the chat. So I think we'll go ahead and wrap up the presentation. Um, as I said, I'll follow up with everybody and make sure that I can answer any questions you have. But I think this is a real unique opportunity. If you haven't been to Alaska before, before to um, you know get a good opportunity to immerse yourself in the beauty of the Inside Passage. And if you have been to Alaska before, I think you'll have a very different perspective on it um, having crews on board Queen Elizabeth. It'll give you a, a new lens on a place you've already been. So um, I hope you'll consider joining me. And as I said, I will definitely follow up with each of you in the next week or so. So Joe, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, thank you everybody for joining us. We yeah, thanks for joining us. And we'll be in touch. All right, take care. Bye. <laughs>